Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Boy, this is a special day. I'm just having such a great time. I have such a great guest. You're watching Acts of the Apostles. Of course, you're on the Marketplace Network. Of course, I'll be your host. I'm Dr. Ken. With me is a very, very special guest, a lovely lady I just met. I just had to come to her house and interview her. She, you'll love her too. Who am I talking about but Ann Bowman, the artist. Thank you, Ann, for joining me My today. pleasure. My pleasure to be here. It's wonderful. And thank you. Nice to meet all of you as well. Yeah. Now, Anne's a special, wait till you hear her testimony. I heard a little bit about it, but she's an artist. She's got a testimony that goes way back. So we're going to start from the beginning, if that's okay with her. And how did you get to know the Lord? Okay. So I'm going to start at the beginning. Uh, this little Jewish girl from the Bronx didn't know the Lord. <laughs> I was, I was, you know, like a lot of Jewish kids, I was born Jewish, so you became Jewish automatically. You don't uh -huh. need to be baptized. You don't need to go anywhere and do anything. You are Jewish. It's understood. Uh, I used to tease people and tell them I'm Jewish because I ate bagels, but that's <laughs> But that's become a universal thing, so that doesn't qualify you anymore. Um, and honestly, I didn't know the Lord at all growing up. He knew me, which I found out later on when I came to the Lord that he knew who I was, but I did not. I wouldn't have known him if mm. he knocked on my door and asked for me to come in. It wouldn't have worked. Um, <laughs> seriously. Uh, <clears throat> through a course of events, we left New York when I was... Uh, 17, we moved to uh, North Hollywood oh. uh, in Los Angeles, California, and I'm, we're still in California in, in the San Fernando Valley now. But um, through the years, I got married, had children, got divorced, got remarried. My second husband um, and some friends, if you know Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr., mm -hmm. who I've known since I went to UCLA, um, I met Marilyn and Billy before they were Marilyn and Billy, when they were just Marilyn and Billy. <laughs> <laughs> They're a lovely couple. So uh, I've known them for a long time. Uh, I was pregnant with my second child at their first wedding, at, when they got married, I should say, and I went to their 50th anniversary with my second husband. So you can see a lot took place in between, yes. but along the way, uh, they asked me periodically to come to church with them, that they wanted to um, bring me to church and introduce me to the Lord, mm -hmm. and that would not have worked out with my life at the time. Mm -hmm. But as with all of us, the only thing in life that's constant is change, and my life changed eventually, and I got together with my present husband, Bill. And when that happened, I realized, I can go to church now. Wow. wow. I can go to church now. Now, it was interesting. One of the reasons I didn't like going to temple was I didn't understand a word, mm. not a word uh, in Hebrew. The English wasn't so bad, that I got. <laughs> but the Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew was another story entirely. The only Hebrew word I know is shalom, and, and that doesn't take you too far. So. Um, <laughs> When I got to church, I remember the first time I went to church with my husband Bill and mm -hmm. Billy and Marilyn. I know that can get a little confusing. I, I remember when the church service was over and I looked at them and I said, oh my God, I understood every word. <laughs> <laughs> you were surprised. I huh? said, I, I, I didn't know what to really expect because um, nobody broke out into another language of any sort. <laughs> they were just singing and speaking in English and I just thought that was just absolutely fantastic. But I also got the message. I got the message. So this was um, a few months after we got married. Mm -hmm. So we got married in June of 97. So we're talking about the fall of 97. Okay. And this was going to a place in, in the valley called Church on the Way. Mm. And they then invited us to join them for the Christmas show. At that time, a man named Pastor Jack Hayford, who has since passed away, they used to put on Christmas shows that looked like Hallmark cards that came oh, to wow. life. Wow. I mean, they were magnificent. And we went to the show and I was just totally blown away. And, the, and all the Christmas stuff, et cetera. 
And then um, after that, in January, I said to my husband, I said, I want to go back to church again. And he went, we went, and Marilyn was out of town at the time, so I was standing between Bill and Billy, and when Pastor Jack gave an altar call, and I said to my husband, I said, I, I want to go up, I want to accept the Lord, and I said, would you take me? He looks at me, he goes, no. I looked at him and I said, what? <laughs> I said, no. He goes, you ask Billy. They've been asking you for years if you want to accept Ooh, the Lord. That's a good word. So he pointed me to Billy. So Billy took me up for altar call. And, and I'm telling you, he jumped out of his shoes. He was so excited that, and Marilyn was not there. And uh, he was just so excited. So uh, I came to the Lord with them. Amen. And. Uh, <clears throat> And a few months later, I was baptized in, in somebody's pool, and Bill was re-baptized mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, we've been together ever since. Now, what's interesting is <clears throat> when I was married to my first husband, we never did Christmas. We did Hanukkah. I tried to push the limits on it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we did Hanukkah. But my neighbor down the block who always did Christmas, I was always at her house decorating her tree and helping her do Christmas and what. Well, as soon as I was, um, no, let me rephrase, as soon as my life changed, I had the opportunity to, to do Christmas. I was so excited. I didn't know what to do with myself. Mm -hmm. So remember now that this is our second marriage. We didn't have two nickels to rub together at the time. Uh -huh. So Bill had an old white Christmas tree, obviously phony because <laughs> Christmas trees don't come in white, but obviously phony. So we went to the store and we, we, we had to make it look good, right? So we bought a string of, of Jewish stars, decorative Jewish stars and blue blue bulbs for the tree. So here I now have my Hanukkah bush. I, love I, it. I had to make this work. Mm -hmm. So now I have a, Hanukkah, a white Hanukkah bush decorated with strings of Jewish stars, uh, and, and Bill did get me um, some sort of a decoration that went on top. I can't quite remember it, some Jewish mm -hmm. star, whatever it was. So I was, I was trying to marry everything. Well, when I came to the Lord, I found out that I was the perfect marriage. I am a Messianic Jew. Amen. Jesus is Jewish. It doesn't get any better. Yeah. <laughs> then Bill told me, he says, you're the chosen people. He said, I'm the one grafted on to you. I said, okay, I'll keep that in mind for future reference. <laughs> but, um, and that's how I came to the Lord. And, and, and since then, and since that baptism, I remember when my, my kids were there and my son looked at me, he says, well, do you feel any different? When I came out of the water and I said, not at the moment. I said, G give it a minute. And it's amazing what begins to happen as you go through the process of living with the Lord and vice versa, as the Lord is now living in you, or you are at least acknowledging that he was there. Amen. Because honestly, until then, he was there. I just didn't know it. Wow. He, he's been there all that time. That's powerful. That's powerful. See, that gets you an idea of somebody, even though raised Jewish, you would think if you read the Bible, those Jewish people, they would know, but you know, they were speaking Hebrew. It's so confusing. Did you see the difference? And her husband's very gifted in the word. So he's a preacher. He knows the word. So that's what got her involved in all this. But go ahead and continue. So that, that's honestly uh, how things began to happen. I Like I said before, I was not raised with any knowledge of Judaism, and truth be told, when I came to the Lord and became, I started to go to Bible studies at Marilyn and Billy's first, we now have our own here because like, like uh, Pastor Ken said, he, my husband is an ordained minister. Uh, it, it came as quite a surprise to me to find out that the more I found out about the Bible, the more I learned about Judaism. I can't even begin to tell you wow. how much I learned about Judaism as I learned about the Bible because the Old Testament is indeed the foundation for the New Testament. That's right. I mean, without it, we would we it would be a whole other song I'd be singing. It just wouldn't be the same same thing at all. 
Honestly, I don't know who divided the book into old and new, but I think it should have ended, the Old Testament should end where, when Jesus was resurrected. Somehow it got messed up, but nobody asked for my opinion, so I'm just sharing that with you now. Uh, but I honestly think it should be someplace else, but that's just my humble opinion. Yeah. I know, but um, what kind we of We didn't see your name in the... The 66 books, I don't know of Anne. <laughs> no, my name was not there. <laughs> I'm kidding. I always do that myself. I'm looking to see, you know, here's my opinion, but yeah. it really doesn't count. It's not in the Bible. Not at all. But I want to bring up something real quickly because uh, I don't want to, I want to really emphasize this. And it's at, uh, Romans 12, 8, and it talks about the artistry uh, business uh, bishop our bishop at the Marketplace Network is very gifted with artistry. And I want to talk about that real quickly. If I may, don't get mad at me. We're in this beautiful home. It took me a long time to walk. When I first walked in, it looked like this little quaint little house and it was beautifully decorated. And I saw all these things on the paintings on the wall. And the more I walked around, the farther and bigger it got. And pretty soon I was lost away in the back. She had to come find me. But I want to, don't get mad at me. I. I want to take time to pull out this. Um, I took this off the wall. Don't get mad at me. But she's an <laughs> artist, and she did this. And I want to show everybody how talented she is. Okay, what is this, Anne? This is a painting I created um, called Eternity. Now, put it down for a minute. OK. I taught high school for 32 years. Uh, when I went to school, high school and college, I was on an academic track. I never picked up a paintbrush because I didn't have time. I was too busy being smart. Uh, and honestly, did not start to paint until I retired from teaching. I didn't know that I could. But when I retired from teaching, uh, and I did have much more time on my hand, of course, my kids were out of the house by then. I'm going, so who am I now? Nobody's going to call me Mrs. Bowman anymore because that person stayed in school. She doesn't exist anymore. So who am I? And my husband very smartly said to me, leave it alone, it'll fall into place. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'd like to take art classes. So I started to take art classes and found out along the way that I wasn't half bad. Mm -hmm. So um, this particular one is called Eternity. And as you can see, it's supposed to make you think of off in the distance as that pier just goes off in the distance and these two clouds form of what looks like a couple just gazing into each other's eyes because they are going to be there for eternity. And that's exactly what it's supposed to make you think of. Now if you see something else in that painting, that's fine. That's exactly what art's about. You can interpret this any way. This is not abstract. I've seen some abstract paintings. This is not one of them. So I am share that with you. So if you see another interpretation of it, that's great. Enjoy yourself. That's exactly what. I have to show another one. Sorry. Okay. I want to give the whole view of what everything is going on, how, the, uh, how it all works and what you're about. This is called The Girl in the Garden, I think. I was just telling Pastor Ken at the beginning, I said, uh-oh. I can't quite remember the title of this, but if you go on my website, you'll find it. And it's called The Girl in the Garden, and that's exactly what it is with the three little hummingbirds around her, just enjoying the day in the garden. And, and um, I think she might be waiting for a friend. I'm not sure. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Let me show one more and I'll stop. Okay. Now, look at this one. Wow. I really enjoy this. You can go anywhere with this one. Yeah. Tell us about it. This one is called the Gossip Girls, uh, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're talking about somebody somewhere. As women are prone to do, they're going to be talking about you. So these three girls are dressed to the nines, probably at a dance. They might be checking out some dude waiting for them to, him to come over and ask him to dance. I don't know. But they're just having a, a good time. Um, having a good time. That's exactly what they're doing. And I just, I love color. When I paint, there's always a lot of color. Uh, if you go to my website, you'll see everything's about color. Uh, and it, it, that's just the way I roll. I just, I, I'm, it's not, nothing dull here. Amen. Now, if you're interested in any of these, on the bottom of the screen, there's her, uh, not only her email, but her website, you can check all that out if you want to buy anything. She's got it at a discounted price. You can sell it to her and she'll send it right out. Now, if you want to 
you want something more original, something that uh, you want to pose for, if you have a special event, she's open to that. Her email is at the bottom of the screen. You can contact her. Yeah, She'd yeah, be I happy. Do, I do yeah. commissions. Yeah. She's very good. Now, I, this beautiful house, I have to one more time say, there's so much on in here, it would take me, you know, weeks to show all the things that she has there. They're very unique. Each one's more unique than the other one, and the different colors and all that, and there's stories behind each and one of them. And she's just got an eye for decorating. She's quite an artist. So that's something prophetically you gotta see. She's really got a prophetic eye, and that's a key to some of the things in the Bible. When she, when you paint, I want you to get this. If you commission her, she will see something you might not see, and it'll be from a different view. And I want to, I want to share something with you. So many times we get caught up in the Greek, the Hebrew, and all that. As Bishop t teaches us at the marketplace, you know, sometimes we don't. It's good to know the definitions and the words, and the words are more description that way. But like Ann said, I mean, sometimes we get caught up and we can't, we can't say the words. We don't understand the words, and it's real hard to understand. So I think God's a God of many languages, so He, he can speak to you in the language which you need to know. And that's what it took her so long she got saved like I did later on in life. So therefore, for her, it was a very unique experience. And she had a lot of experience. And she's a teacher, for goodness sakes. So it wasn't like she's some dumb lady that doesn't can't read or doesn't understand anything. She was highly educated. So when she came to the Lord, she came with all full blast. She sold out. You can tell in her house, everything's all about the Lord. Now, as we start to close, and I want to ask you, tell us about some of the things you do for the Lord, like you bring different artists in and they, they talk about, uh, tell us about that. I am also a chaplain. So when he said, tell me about what you do, uh, I get phone calls a lot from women who need to, someone to talk to. Amen. So I'm able to, I'm able to teach them, te guide them. Yeah. You know, that phrase, you can lead a horse to water and watch it die of thirst. All you can do is lead a horse to the water. The rest is really up to the horse. Uh, and, and so all we can do is give out the word and pray that you understand that you need to take this the first step. This is not gonna happen without you. Uh, but he's there for you if you reach out. Um, we also have monthly Bible studies here. Uh, my husband writes the best Bible studies. Yes, I am prejudiced. Uh, but he and you does, send them out too, right? Yeah, we send them out. So they can email if you and get you them? You can email to me and you'll be put on the Bible study list and you'll, and you'll get them monthly. He sends them, we send them out monthly to you. And then once a year I have an art show. Uh, it's at our home and um, um, I have 34 vendors this year. So I'm trying my to do goodness, a little bit geez. for a lot of other people. Well, you never know where that goes either, because it's not all uh, canvas art. It's um, crafts of jewelry making and, and, and card making and uh, essential oils and soaps and, and, and uh, sculptured uh, glass and, and uh, yard art, you know, uh, wrought iron signs for the lawn and things like that. Uh, somebody makes purses. I mean, all kinds of, of uh, craft. Crafts, that's what it is. So it's arts and crafts, but it's a holiday boutique. So I'm trying to help a lot of people in my own way. And then we, we, we do a lot for a lot of people. It's just low key. We fly under the radar. Amen. <laughs> now, I want you to get what she said. She helps women. Please, if you're struggling, suicide, problems with bullying, whatever it is, Use that email, email her, let her give you some wisdom. Because remember, she was a teacher for a long time. Also, she's a student of the Word, so can you imagine those two things? She knows what it's like to go to school. She knows what it's like when going to school. She knows what a teacher at a school and what you young ladies are going through. So I highly recommend, if you need somebody extra to talk about, it's free, that email right there at the bottom of the screen. Please contact her and let her help you. It's not a coincidence we're on talking about her in this situation. Before I close, and we only got a few minutes, I wanted to ask you one last question. Before, uh, you know, we're gonna come back, you know, we have to interview you yeah. again, because we're not even touching the, the surface of what you have. But would you say, and this is for our folks out there, remember when she said she was Jewish, and she didn't really want to get involved in all that, and your husband never pushed you, is that correct? He did See? not. See? Did you hear what she said? I'm going to give my heart to the Lord. It's her decision, not his. He never pushed her, and he didn't even go up there. It's not like he doesn't care. Tell us. May I share a thought with you, if I'm talking to those of you who are Jewish? 
becoming a Messianic Jew, a Christian, a believer, does not make you not Jewish. It okay. expands mm. You. Mm. you. You you grow. I mean, truthfully, That's Jesus it. is Jewish. Let teach it. Teach it. Jesus mm -hmm. is a Jew. Mm -hmm. um, for you to accept Jesus as your Messiah doesn't make you not Jewish. I've had people tell me when well, you're no longer Jewish. Um, the world according to who? You? I mean, uh, they, they uh, don't even, they have no basis and foundation to say that except they're afraid of stepping out. Mm. I did not become not, one, one man, a rabbi many years ago told Bill that I was mm. no longer Jewish. So Bill says, okay, let's assume you're right. He says, so on the birth certificate where it says religion, should she put what? Not Jewish or what do you suggest she put there? That's and, good. The, and the rabbi looked at him like he was nuts, and I wasn't, you know, so we just left that one alone. But the point is, by accepting Jesus as your Messiah, you grow. You open your whole world up. You're, you're not stuck in a little box anymore. That's a great word. I mean, in all honesty, it hasn't got anything to do with deeds. It has everything to do with who you are and the way you act with other people. Mm, yeah, that's so good. Wow. Remember the email if you're struggling being Jewish and you're wondering, you know, I don't get it. What is this that Jesus was Jewish, the Christian? I don't understand. Please, the expert sitting right next to me, use <laughs> that expert. email right. right there. Let her help you. And she did it so effortlessly. And it was her idea. That's what I want to get across to you. Yeah. Let the Lord lead you as we do. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not a coincidence. Today, we're filming here in this beautiful house in Southern California. Today is the ninth, which means visitation. And by the way, it's the Hebrew definition. Eleven means great exports of faith. And I want to commend Anne for having the faith that let us come out here and film with her. Remember we asked her, she, you know, it took her a while to kind of, and Dale, I just want to give a shout out to my good friend, Dale Davidson. <laughs> I really talked her into this so you can have her next time. But I want to ask, uh, the young lady, if she feels led, if you want to pray for our folks out there for anything that, you know, maybe they're, pray for their salvation, pray for their, uh, the artistry, the gift like you came up with later on in life, or pray for their coming out of, into their own, into their Christianity. Whatever you feel led, if you feel led to pray for us. Hmm. Lord Jesus, we open up our hearts to you and we're asking for you to come in and touch us. We're asking for you to please guide us to where you want us to be and give us the strength and the courage to follow your lead. This is not about us and we have to be strong enough to know that we don't know anything. All we know is you're in charge. And I found out myself that as soon as I gave up all control, that gave me all control because I had none. And think about that for a minute if it doesn't make sense to you. But Lord, just guide these people and let them know that they are great where they are and they can only grow with you. Amen. Amen. You know what I would do? Here's just a little something, you know, it's not that, you know, uh, they need money to live or move into a bigger house. I can't imagine bigger than this and all the <laughs> things they have in here. It's just really well done. And she decorated, by the way, that's something else. In fact, I brought one of the apostles with me that we do a lot of broadcasting. And he said, can you do my home next? This is how nice this home looks. But, you know, it wouldn't hurt to give a donation to one of her artwork. You can have something that is uh, from a Christian artist, something that's up and coming, something that's going to break through, and it's going to be worth a lot of money someday. But more importantly, the memories, the, the, the thing that you can hang on your wall knowing that this is something deep, somebody that really has lived life, that she's been to a lot of um, depth in her Christian walk, not safe for a long, long time, being very lost, being in the school district and mentoring all those young ladies and men that uh, at the same time she was finding her way and becoming the fine Christ in her later years with her husband. I think it's a quite a testimony and I encourage you to buy her art. Anything you want to close with as I close. I thank you. It's great meeting you, and I look forward to seeing you again. And God bless you all. You'll see her next time. Well, I want to wrap this up. It's the Marketplace Network. Of course, it's the Acts of the Apostles. You can see the beautiful scenery. Of course, don't forget her email, her address, and, of course, her website. Come next week. I'm Dr. Ken. We'll see you next week on Acts of the Apostles.